to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. So if you haven't watched my previous video you're probably wondering who this is. This is my female leaf insect and in today's video I'm going to show you how I set up her enclosure so without further ado I'm going to insert the footage now of me setting up her enclosure a couple of weeks ago. So right now I'm just setting up the enclosure for my leaf insect and the enclosure that I am using is an acrylic cylinder one um, which is this thing here and I ordered this from a website called bugsar.co.uk now a lot of people do use enclosures like this, originally when they were starting out collecting invertebrates a lot of people would keep them in kind of sweet jar style enclosures. Now it has progressed a bit from this and on the market there are enclosures like the one that I have right here. As I said before this isn't a care video but they do need to have an enclosure that is at least three times the size of their body. So I did actually have a hard time finding one that was one big enough and two did actually have good ventilation for the leaf insect and now I'll show you the lid and show you what that looks like. As you can see this lid has a vent on the top and then on the back it has really really fine mesh which is good because it's not going to be able to get through the mesh. So this is the enclosure that I've chosen to go for. If I do find that it does end up being too small for my leaf insect which I don't think it will because it is meant to be three times the size and I think my leaf insect's only supposed to get to at most 10 centimetres the species of leaf insect that I have so this should be fine for it but if I do find that she needs a bigger enclosure then I will upgrade her. So along with the actual enclosure it also came with this twig pot and you basically just put whatever food source you're choosing to feed your leaf insect in here and I'm going to be feeding mine bramble and um, these are really good because you fill this bit with water and this makes the plants last a little bit longer than they would if you didn't have this and then it's also designed in a way that your insects shouldn't be able to go and drown themselves in the water. Um, it also came with a paintbrush, which I'm not really going to use, um, a magnifying glass in case you want to have a really up close and personal view of your insect's face, I guess. Um, it also came with a mini version of this, I guess. And again, this has mesh, the same mesh that's on this has mesh on the lid. Um, I'm not really going to be using this unless I end up with baby leaf insects at one point, but it's good to have this just in case I do need to travel with her anywhere or anything, but whoops. <laughs> and then the next thing I came with is also a misting bottle. Now I've never kept anything like reptiles, I've had stick insects before, um, so I don't really know if this is going to be a good way of misting it. If I do find that the droplets are too big or anything, I will go out and get a better misting bottle, but for now this is what I have. And then the last thing that it came with is this bag of bedding. Now I can't remember what they actually said this bedding was. It said it on the website but when I just went back to check it didn't say it anymore so I'm not sure what this is but I probably won't use this initially. I'm probably just going to be using paper towels just to check that everything is okay before I start using any sort of substrate like this. Oh and I also picked up this heat mat. Um, I just ordered this off Amazon. As I said before, I've never had like reptiles or anything that requires heat sources, so this was my first time ever buying anything like this, which was quite exciting, but I got one that was small enough to fit just half the enclosure to give it a warm side and a cooler side, and they do need heat mats because they do require to be at temperatures of about 25 to 30 degrees Celsius, and it's not quite that temperature here yet, so I picked up a heat mat just to make sure that she was being kept at the right temperature. Thank you. 
this is the enclosure and if you're interested in any invertebrate enclosures, I'll leave where I got it from linked down in the description. So I wanted to talk more about this enclosure specifically because I found it kind of hard to find one that was exactly what I was looking for. I found it quite hard to find one that was over 30 centimetres. A lot of the ones were really under 30 centimetres and of course that is not appropriate for this specific leaf insect. They do need their enclosures to be about three times the length of them, which this one is. So I was looking at some that had extra ventilation on the sides, but unfortunately these ones were plastic and I was a bit worried that they would kind of warp the view of looking inside the enclosure. I was also worried about using them with a heat mat, so I didn't buy those ones. But this one is actually acrylic and I'm really happy with it. On footage it probably looked quite small, but next to my head you can see that it is pretty large and considering she's really small, I'd only keep one leaf insect of her species in here, but there is plenty of space for her and plenty of space for her to shed. Although I think she has finished shedding because she does have her final form of wings, but I'm not too sure. But she does have enough room in here and I definitely wouldn't recommend keeping more than one leaf insect in an enclosure of this size. If you are thinking of getting two or more, I definitely up the enclosure size, but for her this is perfect. Now as you can see she has her brambles in here and she has her little twig pot down here and I only cleaned her out a couple of days ago and it's already pretty disgusting. So I'm glad that I didn't use the substrate that came with the enclosure and I am using paper towels because she poops a lot and I really wasn't expecting an insect to make this much mess, but she does. So I also put some twigs in here and I did wash them and everything before putting them in, but I just put them in there to give her something extra to climb on and then she obviously does have her bramble which we have to go and pick ourselves. So yeah that is her enclosure guys, I hope you like it. <laughs> so on my previous video I left it up to you guys to give me name suggestions and you left me some really good ones. Some of the ones that stuck out to me were Flora, Fern and Ivy, that came up a lot and I think they're all really good names that would suit her. Now although originally I did want to go with a very feminine nature themed name, Jessica Witch, I'll leave her channel down in the description, she's also a YouTuber, gave me a really good suggestion on Twitter and that was Pick It. Now if you haven't seen Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, I highly suggest you go and do that after this video because it was a really good film and I love it. But Pick It is the name of Newt Scamander's Bodrickle and although I'm only a zoologist, so I'm not a magi zoologist and she's obviously a leaf insect, I thought they were really similar and I really like the name suggestion, so that is what her name is going to be. There's one particular part in the film where Newt says that Pickett has attachment issues. He has some attachment issues. Pickett. And I thought that was really fitting because whenever I go and put her in her enclosure, she really doesn't want to let go of me, so I thought it would be a really great name for her in that sense, and because she does kind of look similar. So her name is Pickett, and that probably doesn't surprise some of you because some of the names I pick are quite unusual, but don't worry if you gave me suggestions that I didn't pick, I will probably use them in the future. As I said before, I do intend to feature her in lots more videos, so I hope you're looking forward to that. Subscribe if you want to see more animated videos from us, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye! She's waving. Say bye!